Open yourself to wisdom by surrendering to the unknown. It takes a really strong person to stay to themselves in a world where people will settle for anything just to say they have something. We settle for the job because we need stability. We settle for the friendship because of the years invested. We settle for the relationship because someone along the way of our life has convinced us that total and overall acceptance for who we are as a person is some fairy tale that we need to grow out of. I think there's a piece of us in everyone that longs for the gratification feeling that we get when we are collecting all of these things like the house, the car, the kids, the dog. But what if we wake up to all of these things? We wake up to all of the old desires of the heart and it still feels empty. What if the things that we desire now are just a representation of a mindset of lack that we had in our past and a mindset that we will eventually grow out of? As you can tell by now, if you've watched enough of my videos, a lot of them are about stripping back the layers that we have created within ourselves that are keeping us from our most desired outcome or keeping us from our highest timeline. Although it takes a lot of training and processing of the mind, what it ultimately is is a complete release of control. This takes an absolute surrendering. And the act of surrender was a hard concept grasp for myself. I like structure. I like knowing. So being able to commit to the actual real feelings of freedom in the surrender is very challenging for me. It's very hard for me to accept, but it doesn't mean I shouldn't try or strive to do it. In this video, I will be talking about surrendering to the unknown to raise your energetic frequency. We need this skill to strengthen our intuition, to act on our desires without fear, and to develop our futures that are in most alignment with our purpose, not necessarily things that we see that we think we want because other people look good having it. So I hope with this video and the way that I process this concept, it will be of service to you. So welcome to the Ron Hab podcast where we get real and then some. I'm your host Jasmine Siri and every week I will discuss topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind so we can accomplish our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. Are you settling or surrendering? To settle, to surrender. When you hear them, they both sound similar. Both require a level of resolve. When it's suggested that we surrender in our lives to the unknown, this is an act of moving in our life with so much flexibility that no matter the journey or the swiftness of the pace in our lives, we are left not so affected by the way of the ride that we lose sight of the principle of our divine path or lose gratitude of actually reaching these certain destinations. Statistics say that people who are asleep while a car accident is happening are more likely to survive it because their bodies in the unconscious state are more resilient. That's crazy, right? And to me, there's nothing more final than death. And to be able to survive through a trauma on that level or any level is an indication that you have opportunity, you can capitalize, and as long as you're breathing, you have options. But for the things that happen in our lives outside of the physical that still greatly affect us, like the things that are hard to talk about, hard to say, or hard to discuss amongst others, whatever it is, this could be keeping you from the act of surrender because you're still holding on to the fact that it happened. There's a part of you that's still surprised by it. How easy are you able to forgive? I say this because I've discovered that it is a key to unlocking yourself to the shackles of a dense frequency. How can the divine deliver us from a past we choose to stay shackled to? You claim to have surrendered, but as soon as something happens that even looks like that one thing that someone did to you that time ago, you react in the same way. 
release yourself and hear. This is the place where the divine can truly see us. This is where change is made. And this is the vehicle for ascension. And we have to change what's going on in here to see an actual difference out there. So when you think about settling, you may be comparing your relationship or your finances or other things. And I see people not even acknowledging the ways they still haven't let go of certain betrayals that have changed their heart posture. You still get hot in the chest and your armpits start sweating anytime someone talks about something that remotely is close to what you experienced. So of course you're settling because you're emotionally still there. And I think a lot about, you know, Yeshua and just the ways that he navigated in his 30s as I'm approaching 30 in a few months. And there's a part of me that thinks that a lot of development and his travels to different countries and diving into ancient spiritual practices was essential because there were things he had to experience and master inside of his physical body to grow through. And I think a large part of his journey was mastering and embodying in the physical form forgiveness. It's like he had to forgive the fate of his future at some point. His entire life was orchestrated. The God that can create a miracle of his own life had to use his death to service the entire world. And that is a lot to grasp, no matter who you are. If you haven't experienced the pain of death, it's not something to say like, oh no, like you'll be all right. Like there's just a part of me that gets so curious about, you know, the quiet moments in his journey throughout his life where he was like, wow, you know, this is, this is what the plan is and be okay And because you have so many people looking to you for answers, for peace, for wisdom, you're not able to even exist in, you know, the questions that you may have, or you can only go to your father. And I think that's just what's so fascinating about their relationship, because, you know, before I started this journey where I was using my voice, I wanted to exchange my obedience for fatherhood because it was something that I missed. And through the fatherhood that I'm receiving in the spirit, it's just so powerful. It's so powerful because it does take a level of submission and surrendering too when you acknowledge that you do have a father. In in my physical life with the father that I have and the experience that I've had with my father, I was never able to get there. I was never able to feel like this person in my adult life was able to, you know, cover me. And I know that sounds strange, but it's a very dangerous way of feeling when you're a woman because it keeps you, it keeps you in a type of bondage that doesn't allow you to experience men in a healthy way and so by doing this and having this process where I'm writing I'm able to experience God in a way that feels like fatherhood and I know that sounds like out there but it's it's real but it's something that i had to acknowledge enough to surrender to literally i was in my apartment one day and i was told write my words and i just started writing in my notes and then i started speaking and i started speaking more and more and As hard as it is for me to say, it's hard for me to surrender, I did it because I was in search of fatherhood, because that was something that I was missing in my life. I was so desperate for it that I chased after it. And sometimes when you have a call to do something in your life, 
it's going to be that white rabbit that only you can see. And it's going to take you on a journey. So whatever you feel like your call is, you know, it's your call. It's not a Zoom. It's not a Discord where other people are a part of that conversation. It's yours. And only you can identify and feel that. So my suggestion for you is to follow the call that actually resonates within your spirit no one knows how secretly desperate I was and how much it was greatly affecting me that I didn't have fatherhood, but God and maybe other people around me that experienced me in different lights to know that I was missing that. But it was like bait and he reeled me on in and I'm still kind of like trying to get a handle on what it all feels like. Sometimes I start to shake when I think about it, but I guess this is all a part of the surrendering. So like you're literally, like I'm having a conversation about surrendering to the unknown. Everything that I'm saying I didn't write, but it's so real and authentic. This is also training me in the surrendering. And um, I hope that you feel that within yourself about whatever it is that's in your plan and you trust that feeling, no matter how uncomfortable it may be. Human beings are evolving. We are existing in a time in human history where our advancements are growing at such a rapid pace, faster than they ever have been before. It's as if time is speeding up. I think things that advance in the outside world are just a mirror and a reflection of all of the advancements and the things that are happening inside of us spiritually and mentally. I think on a spiritual level, we are finally in a mass able to hold conscious conversations that speak more to the language of the soul. For example, I think indigenous people had their own form of communication and then colonizers came right and traumatized them into learning a specific language but the soul of the indigenous language still existed you know they still had this communication and this connection to spirit and to the land and to all of the things because it was a part of them and when we have these conversations that involve the dwellings within the spirit and in the heart it's like our soul's indigenous language that solidifies the fact that we are all one. And the old ways of this world are dying along with the people who are responsible for making the world this way. And we have the responsibility of making community that has a heart. That's just the only thing that's been bringing me hope. And I'm happy to be able to articulate my thoughts at a time where there isn't much resistance because I know this conversation years ago people just were not supported through it they were being had but it was something so secretive that it just wasn't the norm and I'm glad people are now awake to be a part of it um because I truly feel like humans are like waking up I talked about how feeling how as a mass you know consciously we are farther than we've been before, but we're still a bit behind. And there may be a select few people that are on the frequency of having just wide, vast conversations about, you know, their experiences and the things that they're interested in and more questions that they have about this world and interdimensionally what is going on in this world. Hopefully this community that we cultivate will be, you know so large that people will recognize God in it by the way that we transform. I knew that we were behind when the other day I met a woman who said um, that someone that she loved wanted her to try a yoga class with her. And she said, I'm a Christian. I can't, I'm not into that, like all of that stuff. And I was like, huh? And she was like, you know, like the chakras, like I just, I'm, I'm Christian. I don't know anything about that. And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, 
you have no real understanding of who you're even praying to, because I think even Jesus was doing yoga, you know, when he was traveling, I'm pretty sure he, he knows and respects the chakras, you know, yoga, you know, Ayurveda, I'm pretty sure he was knowledgeable on all of that. And what is this thing about what I've been experiencing or in my walk of life, especially living in the South? It's like after the missionaries and the colonizers realized that they could no longer keep us enslaved with religion, they just like completely dropped it or they just have no real connection to it. So they're just doing all of these things and making all of these laws that make absolutely no sense. And it's so far away from what the spirit actually is and it's like when I think about that, it makes me want to do even more because I'm like, wow, at the end of the day, if they love a higher source, right, wouldn't they eventually want to know its truth? I think I did, and I think that's what got me curious, but I think people just don't love anything enough to be curious enough about it. And that's kind of what kind of throws me off too. Because when you surrender to something fully and release yourself of control of it and release the outcome of like wanting to just monetarily gain or have capital over it or real estate or credit, all of the things, when you take yourself out of gaining from it and putting yourself on top of it to control it, are you really able to love a thing? That's what I have, like... Hmm. Moving on. <laughs> I think a great way to kind of train the subconscious mind into surrendering to the unknown is adopting the feeling of pronoia, which is the complete opposite of paranoia, which is completely training the subconscious mind into believing that instead of things going against you or that the world is conspiring against you, you flip the table and see life as everything happening for you and for your highest good and things happening for the betterment of your divine plan in this life. And I think that is something that I had to adopt in order to psych myself out about the lack of control that I actually had. I think releasing the expectation, releasing and stripping yourself of everything that you've ever thought, and in my experience of life, just where I'm at now, just wanting to be a vessel to help others, it takes me away from the feeling of disappointment because I stopped putting myself so far ahead in my old desires of my past of, I I want this, I want that, I want my life to be this and look like this. And I just had to understand the word contentment, which is basically saying if I'm never given anything at all, I'm still like more than happy. Like I had to develop a life that allowed me to see gratitude in everything that I did because it was making me unhappy. I now exist in a life where if I were to leave, God forbid, tomorrow, I am happy with the work that I have done. I have videos and and things in my notes and people that I've loved and people that I've shared time with that have experienced me. And because they have experienced me, they felt love, they felt seen, they felt appreciated. And I think that was like the root of what I was supposed to do in the very first place, you know? So I had to strip myself and surrender to whatever is next. It's not even mine to have. It's just an accumulation of doing what I'm told 
So even what I receive next is, doesn't even really belong to me. That is the level of surrender that is the challenge and that I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to um, see past because we exist in a world today where, especially people my age, I'm 29 years old. Of course, I'm supposed to be married. Of course, I'm supposed to have some kids and a house and a car and all of these things that I'm in theory supposed to have. But it's like, I don't even want those things anymore in a real way. I don't feel like I'm missing anything anymore. And that's what's hard. When you don't feel like you're missing anything, what do you do with your time? What do you do with your energy? You just kind of be of service and surrender to what you can do, which is, you know, with your experience of life, maybe help someone Hmm. And we spend so many years overthinking into a spiral, asking ourselves, you know, why misfortunes happen, you know, why a person isn't choosing us, you know, and why opportunities slip from our hands and accidents happen and people that we love succumb to, you know, terrible things and mistake it as an indication of our value or some type of consequence. I do believe that there's a cause and effect, but I also believe that there's something divine and things just happening, and we should surrender to that just as much as we surrender to other things. Considering the fact that you even exist, and through the process of insemination, your little thing was able to get to the egg to create an entire person and that alone is a complete miracle that solidifies that you were meant to experience life see this video have these thoughts that you're having and that gives you all of the power and the authority to you know exist in a frequency of a creator that we have to surrender to the divine inside of us to become. Sorry, I feel like this whole thing was just a ramble mumbo jumbo. <laughs> I hope that I said something in this video that resonates with you because I really was able to kind of unleash and release and I wasn't even expecting that, but just thank you for being present for it. And I hope that with whatever I said, it was able to bring some type of awareness to, you know, your path and your journey. There are some people that are watching my videos, you know, you're trying to do something, you know, you have this urge to bring something into fruition. Sometimes we want things so bad, we hold on so tightly to how we think things are going to go. I want you to release yourself from that to bring you closer to what will. And yeah, I think I'm going to cut it off here. I know that was a lot and it may be all over the place. I'm going to edit this in the right way so it it's like a little puzzle and that it makes sense for you. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this talk with me. I hope with whatever I shared today, I was able to be of service to you in any kind of way. I love you so much. Thank you so much for listening and being a part of this collective, whether you like, comment, subscribe or not. I appreciate that. Thank you for giving me the energy of your attention. If you have any ideas of different topics that you would like to hear from me, please let me know. I'd love to have that conversation with you all and just share what you guys think. Um, yeah, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day or night and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.